All right, Ala, so who had the uh, best weekend, as it were, of the Americans abroad? And I guess, I'm guessing you're not gonna go with Christopher Loon since you disrespected his work in Siri Bay. I did not disrespect his work. I just wasn't expecting that Christopher Loon was gonna get a shout out. Mm -hmm. I thought there was gonna be a mention of Christopher Loon. So yeah, I was a little surprised. So let's just say that I'm not taking him into consideration. Hey, great goal, so be it. I'm moving on. In terms of who had the best weekend, we knew how Jirai was scoring goals. We knew that Joe Sargent had been scoring goals. Balogun, I suppose it was a big weekend for him. But honestly, it has to be Tyler Adams. And he's not involving goals or anything like that. He's not scoring in bunches, but he's getting through 90 minutes. Hey! hey yes! Yes! USA, baby! He's getting through 90 minutes of quality where he was impactful for his team, where you saw his role as organizing that midfield, providing the midfield with energy. It was useful work for him, useful work for the team, gets a result, men of the match, Tyler Adams continuing the momentum and his performance against Mexico in, 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 the, in the Nations League. And, and so, look, I think it's all positive here for Tyler Adams. And oh, by the way, is somehow we're gonna give a shout out to Greg Berhalter who was resting him, who was saving him from himself in the semifinal of the Nations League. He was saving those legs, not only for the final, but also now so that he can perform for Portland. Everybody's happy. Tyler Adams had a great week, great goal in the Nations League final and continues to do that. Well, I, I got to say, it's impressive for him to be back. It it's important for him to play 90 minutes and to get to 90 minutes without injury. I think it was a huge, great, productive weekend for Tyler Adams. Yeah, the 90 minutes is especially impressive, Ale, when you consider the 45-minute limit that he had uh, over the international window. It's funny, right? When you talk to, like, U.S. fans, Ale, I feel like there's a, a pretty consistent opinion of who Tyler Adams is as a player and kind of where the American fans rate him. Maybe here you can give us a little bit of a, of a different perspective because I feel like when we pe talk to people maybe outside that American bubble, the opinion on Adams is a little bit more divided. How do you rate him? I think Tyrell Adams is an important player to the United States men's national team. I'll say that much. And that's, I suppose, as positive as I'm going to be regarding Tyler Adams. He gives his team energy. I'm talking about the national team. Energy, personality, a presence through the midfield, a sense of leadership. But that sometimes that sense of leadership goes missing for this national team. And I think his role is very important and very critical to that and to Greg Verhalter. In terms of what he is as a player, look, I think it, it's important to recognize that there are certain limitations to his game. And while he has a, a good engine, and while he has great personality, and yes, he can communicate the game, and he seems to be able to communicate that with his teammates as well, and has good rapport with his teammates, uh, there are certain things that he doesn't quite bring to the field consistently. Size is a problem in that position. I think that can be an issue, and it's, it's not something that it's his fault, but it's, it's when you consider about playing against some of the best opposition, not in CONCACAF, but beyond CONCACAF, mm. you're going to find that guys in those sort of positions, you, usually you're talking about a brick house. Tyler Adams is not a brick house. He is not. That's not his strength. That's not what he does best. So physicality can be an issue. Uh, at times, I think that even though he can cover ground, there's a lack of athleticism when guys run off his shoulder. And so that positioning that I, I was just talking about becomes increasingly more important because if he's unable to recognize the spaces around him and athletically cannot quite stay with guys that make runs out of the midfield, it, just just put it to you this way. And and this is a mismatch for most people around the world, not, not just Tyler Adams. But say like a guy like a Jude Bellingham running out of the midfield. Is Tyler Adams tracking that run and actually getting there and winning a challenge? Well, no. But is Tyler Adams good enough to do that in CONCACAF? Yes, because you don't have that quite a, that quite a specimen, that, quite a, that, that kind of physicality at, at that sort of level. So there are limitations to his game. Regardless, I, I still think that he's critical to the success of the national team. All right, so you've gone with Tyler Adams as for who had the best weekend. I'm going to go with the player that you kind of suggested but didn't end up choosing, uh, and that's Falerin Balogun. And that's Ale basically down to the need, right? Obviously, Tyler Adams needed 90 minutes. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. But, man, 
Balogun needed goals. We can talk about what just happened in the international window, right? Where I think he came into that window number one in the depth chart. And I think you can argue that he left it maybe second, maybe third. And then if we look at his club form, Ale, beyond that, before he scored these two goals, he basically had one goal, one league goal, in the last three months. Um, that is ice cold, and I really questioned whether he could catch fire or not. Now, the one thing here is these goals didn't come in a start, and that's what you got to see from Balogun. We want to see him starting. Uh, they do come off the bench, but Ale, as this guy fights for more playing time with club, which will eventually maybe allow him to get back to that number one spot in the depth chart with the national team, he's going to need performances like this. And I don't think you can overstate just how big a brace is uh, for a guy who scored basically once in the last 90 days of league play. Critically important for a forward. You need to see that ball going in the back of the net. And sometimes what it takes is sort of that fluky goal that he scored that it's more about the goalkeeper doing shakastrophic things rather than Balogun. <laughs> Balogun is just pressuring the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper says, here you go. You, you need some charity? Here is some charity, buddy. Go on and score a goal. It's important for him to, yes, to get starts, but in order to get starts, you got to score goals with consistency. The two goals will help, but to your point about what his status is with the national team, I'd argue that, yeah, he may have come in as one. He may have slipped all the way to three, but the truth is that that position is not all that well defined. Mm. So you could be three today, you could be number one tomorrow. That's how quickly the situation changes with the with, with the center striker position with the national team because nobody has said that is mine. Give it to me. Give it to me. It's mine. I'm mm. not giving it away. Whether it's because of injuries or lack of productivity or inconsistency, you think that you have a number one and the number one disappears. And so. Next guy, next guy up, you think that that's going to be the number one, and he disappears. So until somebody actually grabs a hold of this position and consistently performs at a high level, both with club and country, we're going to continue to have this conversation. How big of an issue is it, though, Ale? Could you, could you make the argument that it's actually a good thing that there's so many choices, or does the U.S., as we've discussed many times on this show, desperately need to find that guy, that guy that's going to be the centerpiece to the attack ahead of, of course, Copa America this summer, but you got a little bit more time until the next World Cup. Well, I'll ask you, Seth, right? Wouldn't you rather have a guy, the guy, the one that you know, instead of actually going into a tournament, searching and hoping? This whole idea that they're just competing and making each other better? No. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. No, 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 right? Norway knows who their number one is. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to make it to the Euro because they have all sorts of other issues with that team. But they know Erling Haaland is mm -hmm. going to play. Uh, they know that that's the guy. I'm, I'm just giving you the best example in terms of a well-defined striker that you know, if he's healthy, he's going to play. Well, give me the guy, not a bunch of, he could be the guy. He could be the guy today. He could be the guy tomorrow but we're not quite sure. Mm. And if Berhalter had a choice, he would like to have this position well-defined and say, you know what? Down the, we always talk about down the spine of a team to know full well that if I need a goal, if this team needs a goal, who am I looking to and who's going to be that guy that gives us the best chance to score mm. that goal? The United States right now is still searching for that. Nations League, it was had you right, but it was supposed to be Val again. And then this week, Val doesn't score a couple of goals. So maybe he's going to be the guy. And George Sarden, when he's healthy, maybe he's the guy. Uh, yeah. You know why there is no guy? Because mm. none of these guys have proven to be consistently the best option. Ale, do you have a favorite in the bunch? I mean, they all have kind of different strengths, different qualities. We've seen some succeed at club. Others do very well with the national team. Of kind of those four main competitors... Do you have a guy who you would put your bet on if you were betting on it? I'm not betting on this guy. <laughs> but I would say right now, in, in mm -hmm. terms of, of performance, in that quality of performance and thorough performances, I would say Hyde Wright okay. has been better than everybody else. Uh, Balogun, I think there's a lack of confidence there right now that is very clear to see. As for Josh Sargent, I have questions about whether he can stay healthy. And and, and and this goal that he's scoring, while impressive, can he carry that form to the national team? And we just haven't seen that very consistently. Yep. All about staying healthy. A very, very interesting race for the number nine.